Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany here with another video to help you guys live a happy, healthy, awesome life in a wheelchair. And today I am going to be doing a video all about the types of materials that wheelchair cushions can be made out of. This is a video in a series of videos I'm doing leading up to a YouTube live that I'm going to be doing with a wheelchair seating OT and Blake Medical, who's the manufacturer of the cushion that I'm currently sitting on. And we're gonna be sharing how to choose a wheelchair cushion, what that process should look like, things you should take into consideration, just so that you guys are educated about um, how to get a wheelchair cushion and what you should uh, wa be watching for when you're working with a clinician, because God knows I spent years and years um, in a wheelchair before I really understood that there's a process and that there are things that I should understand about the cushion ordering process in order to be able to get a quality cushion that is right for me. Uh, so I just wanna be able to educate you guys um, with that same information. Uh, Blake Medical is going to be there, which again is the, the manufacturer of the cushion that I'm sitting on, and they're gonna be doing a giveaway um, of a gel product of your choosing. Uh, you can get a cushion or a backrest. They have other kinds of products. The only thing that they're not giving away is a mattress because obviously that's kind of expensive. Um, but you can go check their website out if you want to do that ahead of time to kind of see what products they have available uh, in case you win the giveaway. Uh, back to this video. Um, oh, I should tell you the date. Um, the live is on February 8th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and I will put a link in the description below that you can click on and sign up for notifications when we are going live so that you don't miss it. Uh, and I'm doing hopefully three videos in this series leading up to that live to educate you on some of the things that we're not gonna have time to talk about in that live. So the first video I did was on pressure sores, how to prevent them and having a good seating system was one of those ways. Um, and this video again is all about cushion materials because we're not going to have a whole lot of time to talk about the types of cushion materials that are available on the market. So I just wanted to be able to give you guys this information before that live. Um, okay, so let's get into this video. Before we get started on the actual types of materials, I wanted to just talk about what the goals of a cushion is in general and the goals of the material of the cushion. Uh, what those are. So uh, ideally the material of your cushion should be able to redistribute pressure uh, by being immersive and immersive just means that your body conforms to the shape of the cushion and the reason that that's so important is because you want all parts of your legs or if it's like a bed or something. So these I guess would apply to like a mattress uh, too if you were laying on it but the the ability of the material to be immersive and allow all the skin or body parts touching the cushion or the bed to be uh, in contact with that material is important because the more contact you have with all of the parts of your body that are touching that material, the more the pressure is going to be um, evenly divided between uh, the areas of your body that are touching it. So that's important. So your cushion has to redistribute pressure. It has to reduce friction and shear. Um, it's its job is to maintain the temperature of your skin. So in the last video, we talked about your skin's microclimate. You don't want your skin to be too hot or too moist. And uh, a good cushion shouldn't trap heat or moisture. Uh, and then the last thing that your cushion, it's not, these are in no particular order of importance, but the last thing I have in my list is that your cushion should support your posture and your balance. So a cushion uh, is going to be able to align your posture. If you have um, pelvic obliquities or scoliosis or anything like that, your cushion should be able to help correct those so that the pressure on all of the body parts um, under your butt are even. Um, so those are the kind of goals of the cushion and the material that the cushion is made of. Um, and the things to consider when you are getting a cushion, and I will go over this at the end of the video as well, are how much support you need, uh, how heavy you are, because that will make a difference um, between uh, which cushion materials are appropriate for you, uh, the stability that you need. Um, do you need something that you feel that feels really solid when you're sitting on it? Or can you handle something that doesn't feel as solid like an air cushion? Uh, the durability of the cushion. So how hard are you on your cushions? Are you likely to pop an air cushion? Um, those kinds of things. Just if you're going to have a cushion that um, isn't durable, um, but has high pressure redistribution ratings, um, then you can kind of make that choice based on, on your lifestyle. Um, but if you're like somebody like me, that durability is extremely important, then you need to take that into consideration. 
Um, comfort, how comfortable is the cushion? Everybody should be able to try each cushion and see how comfortable the cushion is because at the end of the day, some cushions just aren't as comfortable. Um, your risk for pressure injury. So this is gonna determine how, um, how high the pressure redistribution rating needs to be because some cushions have a moderate pressure redistribution rating and some have a, a high pressure redistribution rating. So they are better for people that are at high risk of skin injury. Um, so that is going to make a big difference in the types of cushions that you're actually considering. Uh, the maintenance of the cushion. So for example, like a gel cushion, you have to knead the gel. An air cushion, you have to make sure that it is inflated uh, properly in order for the pressure redistribution to be accurate for um, your body type or for your weight. So you have to make sure that you are going to be able to handle the maintenance of a cushion. I uh, was terrible with liquid gel cushions because you had to knead it, which I never did and that uh, didn't allow the pressure redistribution to stay con constant. So I constantly had problems when I had a liquid gel cushion um, with um, areas of high pressure under my butt. So the maintenance for me uh, has to be low maintenance and then washability. So are you prone to uh, bowel or bladder accidents? Um, are you gonna be able to clean your cushion adequately when you need to? Can it be disinfected? Can it be machine washed? Those kinds of things you need to be able to look at when you are getting a cushion. So the goals of the cushion and what to consider um, when you're buying a cushion are really important. Uh, now we'll get into the actual um, cushion materials and we're gonna start with gel. I have my like little notebook and you guys will notice, I don't know if you'll notice or not, but I have a new one. So I've gone through enough videos and enough notes that I had to start a whole new notebook. So that's that says something. Normally I don't write anything down. I just go off the cuff and out of my head, but that's never as good. Um, okay, so cushion materials, foam. Uh, before we start to actually talk about the different types of foam that are in cushions, I want to talk about some of the terms that you're going to hear me say when I'm talking about the types of different foam. Uh, and those terms are responsiveness, resiliency, density, firmness, closed cell, and open cell. So what do all, this, all these things mean? Say closed cell foam and open cell foam, we'll start with those. Closed cell foam is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, the foam cells are closed. So picture like small balloons all, um, what did I say in here? All crowded together. Picture small balloons that are blown up just a little bit, all crowded together. Open cell foam, uh, the foam cells are open and connected. It kind of looks like a matrix of like uh, branches uh, that are all sort of supporting one another. So closed cell and open cell foam, uh, responsiveness, which is the material's ability to return to its original shape. That is related to resiliency, so how springy or bouncy the foam is. Density, which is how compact the foam cells are. Um, firmness, which is how, uh, how much force it takes to compress the foam cells. So a lot of people think that a, um, a, denser, a denser foam is automatically gonna be more firm, and that's not the case. Uh, the firmness has to do more with the compressibility of the foam and how much pressure it takes to compress the foam, not really how dense the foam is because you can have a really densely packed foam, but it can also be really soft. So um, don't confuse denseness and firmness because those are often often um, confused with one another. There are a lot of foams that are more dense and are more firm, but that's not always the case. So those are the terms that I'm going to be talking about when I'm going to be going over the types of foam, starting with... Uh, closed cell foam. So there are lots of types of foams that are closed cell, but when we talk about closed cell foam, we are typically talking about really firm types of foam like yoga mats. Uh, and these are usually um, the bottoms of cushions because it's waterproof. Closed cell foam, not all closed cell foam is entirely waterproof, but a lot of it is waterproof. Think a yoga mat or something, if you spill water and you can wipe it off. So closed cell foam is a really good base for a cushion and it's usually uh, what they use for base of a cushion because it has a uh, really good structure and it doesn't lose shape because it's usually really firm. The next type of foam that I'm going to talk about is polyurethane foam, which is like the traditional type of foam. It, is high, it has high resiliency, um, which means that if you squish it, it returns to its shape fast. Uh, it's very responsive. Uh, which means it's more bouncy, so it's like more springy. Uh, it comes in a variety of densities and firmnesses, uh, so you can get like an extremely um, soft 
polyurethane foam and you can get an extremely firm polyurethane foam. Um, it is more breathable than other types of foam that we're going to talk about. For example, memory foam, because it is an open cell foam. Um, it is a supportive foam, so it holds its shape easier. Uh, we'll talk about memory foam. Memory foam sort of squishes and it's less responsive. So it returns to its original shape less fast than polyurethane foams. Um, so polyurethane foams tend to be a more supportive foam, especially if you're like a heavier person, it doesn't compress as easily. Um, and it holds its shape easier. Um, higher density, um, and firmness required for heavier, heavier people. So if you are, if you have a uh, polyurethane foam in your, um, in your cushion, the density and the firmness of the foam is going to have to increase with body weight and size in general. Uh, because you know, foam squishes. And if you are a heavier person, you squish the foam easier. So in order for that foam to push back against you and not compress, you have to go uh, a higher density and a higher firmness. Uh, and generally as a weight rating on a cushion goes up, the firmness and the density of the foam is also going to increase. Okay. The next type of foam is memory foam. So memory foam can be closed cell or open cell. Traditional memory foam, foam is closed cell. And because it's closed cell, um, it traps heat. So memory foam can not be the most amazing cushion sometimes, especially if it's a closed cell memory foam uh, for heat distribution and for maintaining um, a favorable uh, temperature on your skin. But there are lots of foam memory foams that are open cell now because of the temperature issue that sort of comes with traditional memory foams. Um, but the properties of memory foam that make it different than polyurethane foam are it's uh, more immersive. So it's a squishier foam. So remember when we talked about um, the ability of a cushion to conform to your body, memory foam is definitely better at that. We all know we've sat on a memory foam cushion or a mattress before. I don't know if you have, I have, I shouldn't say we all have. If you've ever sat on a memory foam cushion before, you'll know that it's like, it's like squishy. It feels squishy, but because of that, it also uh, feels very soft and comfortable. Uh, so they tend to be more comfortable um, to sit on. Um, it has low resiliency or lower resiliency. I shouldn't say it has low resiliency, but generally uh, memory foam is a low resiliency foam compared to a polyurethane foam because it's not as bouncy. Uh, because memory foam is soft and squishy, it takes a longer time to return to its original shape. So um, if you're moving around on a memory foam cushion, um, it's gonna take a while for the pressure to uh, redistribute um, because it's gonna take a little bit of a, a little bit of time for the cushion uh, in the areas that we were previously sitting on that created an indent for it to return to its shape and conform to that part of your body. Um, okay, so what else? It is somewhat responsive. So it is somewhat bouncy, like it's not um, as bouncy as a, a polyurethane foam that like you squish it, it usually bounces right back up, but it is somewhat responsive. It is good for pressure relief. So um, because a memory foam is more immersive, it is better at relieving pressure because it is better at conforming to um, your body and better at touching all of the areas of your skin. And when all areas of your skin are touching your support surface, then um, the pressure relief or the pressure redistribution is, is better. Um, so generally memory foam is better at pressure relief um, than polyurethane foam. If it's not thick enough, um, you can squish and bottom out. So uh, memory foam has to be a certain thickness um, if the weight is going up in order for it to not totally compress. Uh, it's usually combined with polyfoam to increase its shape and structure for that very reason because polyurethane foam is better at keeping its structure and holding its shape and is more uh, resilient than uh, they're usually combined so that you have the pressure relieving properties of the memory foam and the structure and support properties of the polyurethane foam. Um, uh, and again, I said this at the beginning, but I just wanna reiterate, it is sometimes closed cell. So you might wanna ask about that when you're getting a cushion which can trap heat. Um, so just, just make sure if, you're, if something says that it's a memory foam, 
component in your in your cushion, you might want to ask if it's closed cell, especially if you are a person that runs hot or you have a problem with sweating on your legs. So that's memory foam. The next type is high impact memory foam or high density memory foam. This is a memory foam that is more dense and more firm and it is less responsive than traditional memory foam because it is more dense and more firm. It provides more support than normal memory foam because um, normal memory foam can compress easier. Um, and if you're heavier, um, that means that it's less supportive. So um, high impact memory foam or high density memory foam is, is typically more uh, supportive um, because it's a higher density and, and higher firmness. So that might be a choice for cushions that have a higher weight rating on them. Uh, one more type of foam, which is gel infused memory foam. Uh, so this is sort of like the hybrid between gel and foam, and it is where a foam is made with gel molecules. Molecules, I don't know what they could be called. They're little gel molecules mixed in with the foam molecules. It is more resilient, so it's more bouncy than traditional memory foam. Um, it uh, is more cooling because the gel acts as uh, a cooling agent. It has more structure because the foam makes it more solid and it is heavier because the um, gel is a heavier medium than foam. So you have to watch for that if you are trying to go for something that is extremely light or if having a light cushion is important to you, then um, knowing that a gel infused memory foam is going to increase the weight uh, might be a factor for you. Uh, and it is more responsive. So more resilient, more responsive. It's bouncier, it returns to its shape faster, it's cooling, uh, and it has um, more support and structure than a traditional uh, foam or memory foam. Now we are going to talk about gel. And there are two types of gel. There is solid gel um, and fluid gel or liquid gel. And a liquid gel sounds is just exactly what it sounds like. It is gel that is... Um, liquid. I don't know how else to say it. A liquid gel is exactly what it sounds like. It is a liquid gel. It is liquid in nature, which means that it has a level of viscosity, which means you can squish it or pour it. Um, and every gel cushion is going to have its own um, viscosity. It moves within the container to become a constant equal pressure. Theoretically, this is like the theory behind liquid gels is that they're in uh, they're a little gel compartment and then when you sit on it because the gel can move because it's kind of a liquid um, Then it's going to disperse to create an even pressure uh, Across all of the surfaces that is touching the gel. I don't know if it works as well as um, It theoretically is supposed to I've had liquid gel cushions before and um, I don't think that the the even distribution of the gel just happens as easily as it sounds uh, the gel is often segmented in different compartments to control the flow of the gel because if you have too um, too much of a big or too big of a compartment where the gel can move, then if you have an area of high pressure, it can completely squish the gel into another area. And if it's not compartmentalized, then over time, the gel from one side of the cushion can migrate to um, the other side of the cushion. So like one butt cheek theoretically could have a little bit of gel in it and the other butt cheek could have a lot of gel in it. And then when you sit down and there's an area of high pressure, um, there's one area of your butt that has a lot of gel and another area of your butt that has a little bit of gel. Um, so often they get around that sort of problem by segmenting the gel into little compartments so that the flow can only go so far and it maintains uh, sort of an even distribution of the gel across your sitting surfaces. Um, gel has a better skin temperature control than um, foam. It just has a cooling effect. It doesn't trap heat as much as foam. It reduces shearing uh, forces by allowing your body to move within the cushion. Um, so shearing, again, if you did not watch my last video, is when the inside, two, two tissues inside your body uh, move against one another. So if you are sitting on a cushion that has a high um, coefficient of friction and your body sort of sticks to that uh, material and you move uh, and you move like bend over or scoot your butt forward or something, then the inside tissues in your body like your bony prominences can move and the outside of your body can stay put. But the nice thing about gel is that it's fluid, it's kind of a liquid. 
Um, and if you move, like you bend over to the side, that gel is going to allow your outside skin to sort of move with the liquid so that it's moving with your, your whole body's moving together essentially. So it reduces shear forces um, and friction forces. Uh, the maintenance of the fluid is required to prevent bottoming out. So this is one of those like considerations if you're getting a liquid gel cushion. I had a liquid gel cushion and I was awful at needing my cushion every day because you're supposed to need the cushion in order for the gel to be properly dispersed. And I never did that. So I bottomed out a lot and that caused issues uh, for me in terms of pressure injuries. So if you are not confident that you are going to um, be able to do the maintenance or stay consistent with the maintenance, then this might be something to consider if you are looking at a cushion that has liquid gel in it. The other thing to consider about a liquid gel cushion is that the gel can change um, consistency in different temperatures and it can even freeze if the temperature is too cold. So if your chair is ever like in the back of somebody's truck, if you're in a Canadian winter and it's riding in the back of a truck, or if you're outside for a long enough time, any reason that your chair and your cushion would be exposed to really cold temperatures for a significant period of time, your cushion is gonna change consistency. And if your cushion changes consistency, the material in your cushion, then um, the pressure distribution is not going to be um, the same as if it were um, the right viscosity that you bought the cushion um, with. So keep that in mind for a liquid gel medium in any cushion is that it has um, inconsistent pressure redistribution depending on the temperature and whether you have kneaded it um, and maintained the gel um, like you're supposed to. The next gel that we are going to talk about is dry gel or like a solid gel. Um, and this gel looks more like a silicone than uh, like a liquid gel. And it is kind of rubbery. Um, so it doesn't have uh, any temperature changes in any um, cold extremes, you know, you can put silicone in the freezer and it doesn't get harder and you can put it in the oven. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't melt. So that is um, the, the same type of thing that this gel has the ability to do is hold its shape um, and its consistency no matter what temperature it is, which is super good for people that like durability. Um, it can be flat or segmented. A flat um, dry gel is not um, going to be as good as a segmented dry gel because a um, flat um, dry gel does not reduce friction and shear forces because it doesn't allow you to move with your body. Whereas a segmented dry gel, like the cushion I have, um, it um, reduces friction and shear forces by sort of collapsing on itself. Like the, the segmented portions, when you bend, they sort of bend um, with you and collapse um, so that you're not, you're not actually like scratching um, your butt in order to, to move when you're bending over. So just make sure if you are looking at a dry gel cushion um, that you get one that's segmented or at least um, that would be my recommendation. Uh, and then the last type of cushion material that we're going to talk about, there's only two types of gel, um, liquid gel and dry gel. So we'll move on to the last uh, cushion material, which is air. Um, air cushions are cells that are filled with air, obviously. You can get ones that are actually um, little um, pockets of air that are inflated, or you can get ones that are little pellets that are air filled that you um, fill up a sort of a sack with and then you can take pellets out um, in order to reduce the uh, amount of air if you don't need as much air. Uh, so instead of inflating it like a traditional air cushion, you just are taking out a little air pellets. So there's a couple different types of air cushions out there, but they are traditionally the ones that are the um, the highest pressure redistribution rating in terms of uh, pressure injury risk. Um, but these cushions are high maintenance because you have to inflate them uh, properly. So they have to be calibrated um, in order to have the correct pressure redistribution. Um, and they are finicky because you you can pop them. And if you pop it, then you know your pressure um, redistribution um, is 
totally gone in, in some areas of your cushion. So they are high maintenance. They are um, considered sort of the, the gold standard by a lot of industries in terms of pressure redistribution. I think there are cushions out there that are more durable and require less maintenance that um, do just as good a job at um, redistributing pressure. Uh, okay, did I say everything for air cushions? So they're very immersive. Um, this is why they are the cushions that are generally um, very good at redistributing pressure because air obviously is like, a, it's just like a liquid. If you sit on it, the air will move. Um, it has the freedom to move wherever it wants to in that cavity. Um, and it will generally, m most air and liquid, uh, if they have the ability to move freely, will uh, distribute their molecules evenly uh, in that space. And that's why they are so good at redistributing pressure because the, the liquid and air material just moves automatically um, to, uh, to even itself out inside that cavity. Air, good at pressure redistribution if it's calibrated properly. Uh, I don't tend to choose air cushions because I am hard on my cushions. I require a cushion that is durable and I know that if there's a cushion that is high maintenance, I am not gonna do that. I generally am horrible at maintaining anything, even like cleaning my wheelchair. I'm freaking terrible at it. I know I should be better, but I'm just not. So I need something that is kind of just does the job on its own and I don't need to like baby it in order for it to work properly. Uh, okay, I think that was it. That's it, I went through everything. Okay, so the types of cushion materials that are out there on the market are foam, um, air, and gel. Generally foam is the least uh, sort of good at redistributing pressure. Uh, gel gets better and then uh, air tends to be um, the best, but those are all just generalizations because of course there are horrible air cushions uh, that don't redistribute pressure nearly as good as gel cushions. Uh, and there are gel cushions that aren't gonna redistribute pressure nearly as good as some foam cushions on the market. So it is really a individual cushion type thing and it is really a matter of deciding what you need, what your lifestyle is like and um, what your uh, I guess your risk for pressure injury uh, would be. So again, I'll go through the things that you need to consider when choosing a cushion material. And those things are um, how much support do you need? Uh, how stable would you like your cushion to be? Uh, how durable do you need your cushion to be? Uh, what is the comfort of the cushions um, that you're trying? Do you even like it? Is it comfortable for you? What is your risk for pressure injury? Uh, how much maintenance are you able or willing to do for your cushion? And how washable is the cushion? Those are all really important things to consider when you're choosing cushion material because they're going to determine the types of cushions that uh, your OT narrows down for you to try. Um, and it will also allow you to sort of decide what material is going to suit your lifestyle best. Uh, and then you can sort of go from there when you're when you're making choices. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions about cushion materials, please put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to save any questions about cushion materials for the live that is coming up February 8th at 12 p.m. Eastern time, then please do because um, we will have a wheelchair seating OT at the live and she will be able to answer any questions that you have about cushion materials probably better than I will. Um, but I hope I've given you a good um, sort of rundown of what McCushions. What I, hope you, I hope I've given you a good um, rundown of what cushion materials are out there for you to try so that if you are browsing websites and you see some of these cushion material types, uh, you'll be able to decide um, whether it is uh, appropriate for you or not. And again, that's my whole goal is to educate you so that um, you are part of making the decisions instead of just being sort of a passenger um, and having other people make decisions for you that you really don't understand because that's how we often get uh, disappointed when we don't understand what we need and we get something that isn't appropriate for us because we weren't part of that process or an active part of the process at least. So anyway, I will stop talking now. 
please join me on the live February 8th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, again, you can uh, be entered to win a free cushion uh, if you're there live. So um, I hope to see lots of you there. That's all I got for you. I will see you on another video. Bye, guys.